fight. It's late night with David Letterman. Tonight, Tony Danza, Waylon Jennings, and author Tama Janowitz, plus Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous man. And now, the dog's best friend, David! broadcast. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for dialing us up tonight and tuning us in and allowing me to whisper in your ear. <laughs> last night, here's what I'm doing last night. I go home, I switch on uh, CBS there, and I'm watching the Miss Teen USA pageant competition. They're selecting now the annual Miss Teen USA. Very, very exciting. And when it's finished, the winner receives a congratulatory phone call from Woody Allen. I thought, wow, that's my gosh, that's... Uh, good news today, ladies and gentlemen. Earlier today in South Dakota, we had a hostage situation. A 19-year-old gunman takes a dozen people and holds them hostage inside a room in a Holiday Inn there in South Dakota. Fortunately, he surrendered everyone is fine and the police that were assembled at the site the SWAT team said the reason they did not break in the reason they did not storm the room is because the hostage taker had left that please do not disturb sign on the door and said this well it's we you know, our hands our hands are pretty much tied here there's nothing I mean, we can, we, we, if it hadn't been in place we'd have gone right in but really <laughs> nothing we could do about it are you like me, ladies and gentlemen? Do you, do you enjoy scientific and medical information? I thrive on this kind of stuff. <laughs> Earlier today, there's a major announcement from the folks down at uh, Johns Hopkins University. Scientists there who have dedicated their lives to this one project announced that they believe we are only about eight, nine, maybe ten years away tops from actually identifying the ingredients of a New York City hot dog. Just eight or nine years, and they think, well, no. Exciting news. Wow, I'm momentarily mesmerized. Ah, uh, boy, you know, things are really starting to get very exciting regarding the presidential campaign. November is not that far away. It's like three months off, and we will have uh, elected a brand new president. It's interesting the reaction you get from various people on various fronts of the campaign. Barbara Streisand, the legendary Barbara Streisand, and I, and I think a national theater treasure. Barbara Streisand <laughs> has announced that if George Bush is re-elected president of the United States, she will move to London. I, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Paul, does that bother you? No problem no, it's with okay. that. okay, no, yeah. No. All right, there you go. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, well, we got a really pretty good program for you here tonight. <laughs> this man is very entertaining. He's been on the show many times, has not once failed to be very entertaining. Tony Danza is here again this evening. Uh, 
Uh, also, uh, music legend Waylon Jennings on the floor. Uh, and uh, our old friend Tama Jamowitz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Paul Schaefer. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, kids. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Dave, you know, I was thinking, you can knock aging all you want. Look at me. <laughs> 83 years old. I keep myself fit. You look wonderful, Paul. Thank you. But the one thing you got to say about getting a little older, when it gets yeah. around this time of year, you do not have to worry about going back to school. <laughs> and that is, I think, worth the price of admission. I was thinking about it the other day. It's yeah. a great feeling. You're I got, at an age now where that no longer is a I don't a have to worry about that. I, for a minute, it started to get a little cool, and yeah. I started to say, Man, i got to buy the books, yeah. and you know. <laughs> but I don't have to worry about yeah. it anymore. You so, attended high school until you were like 38, 39. Well, I did it. I had to repeat a few grades, but it was all worth it. I got my Congratulations. Diploma. That's a significant milestone Thank for you, you and your life. Thank you very much. Before the program began this evening, I am up uh, chatting with the studio audience as I do every night before we do the big uh, powerhouse uh, the videotaped uh, program that just kind of sweeps across do. North America. And you can just, you can just feel the electricity kind of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was up there chatting with the audience and I said, I'll, I'll take a couple of questions. And a guy uh, raises his hand. I don't know, did he raise his hand or just shout at, at me? Well, he made him he his presence He raised his hand known. and I, I identified, I recognized the guy, his name is uh, Dick or somebody. We think it was Dick from... <laughs> And, and Dick, Dick says, th this is Dick's question, he says, uh, sometimes when, I'm, and forgive me, Dick, if this impression. <laughs> there, there's Dick right there. <laughs> so Dick's question is, and he's worked on this question. Yeah. He's, he, he's very thoughtful about posing this question. He says, Oh, Dave, and again, Dick, please forgive me. <laughs> he says, sometimes I notice on the show when you have a female guest, you'll lean over uh, before a commercial and you'll whisper something to the female guest. Okay. He says, but when you have men on, I don't see you whispering anything to the men. Interesting. And, yeah, Interesting all, question. All I can say is, figure it out, Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> why, 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 exactly, why exactly would that be a puzzler to you, Dick? <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Have you noticed how uh, life is more complicated than it used to be? It used to be, as I recall, when I was a kid, the only thing that came with a warning on it were matches. And, and the warning on the matches was always closed cover before striking. That's right. And that was about it. That was all you had to worry about. Yeah, that would be the only warning you would ever see on anything that came through your possession in the course of a day, a week, a month, or a year. But that was now, then. anything, whether, whether it's food, whether it's appliances, whether it's toys, whatever you purchase always comes with a warning. Here, let me show you a couple of things that we have. These are actual warnings on, on actual products here. Take a, take a look at this. This is a uh, container, a box of uh, Chanel Sheer Brilliance Lipstick. Now, let me hold that still for you. Can you see the warning on that? Warning. Yeah, there it is. Do not use on infants under the age of six months. <laughs> Carl, Carl, the baby's crying again. It's, it's your turn to change your lipstick. <laughs> you see? Whispering to the guys. Would you like to see me whisper to more guys on the show? <laughs> Going awfully well, isn't it? I think it's well. <laughs> uh, here's something called cup of soup. Now, you wouldn't think this has got a warning on it as well. This is from the folks at Lipton. And you can see right there, this tip for cheese lovers only. Stir in shredded American cheese. Hey, hey, you with the soup. You don't love cheese. Put that down. Are you a cheese lover? Get out of here. Look, Paul, another little gift item with a warning on it. This is a uh, Christmas tree uh, candy dish. Can you see that little warning, warning there on the side? That. Yeah. Not for food use. 
plate may poison food. I've, al I've always felt that nothing says Merry Christmas like... Quite like the gift of tainted candy. Man. Let's get some coffee. Here, Paul, binoculars. What possible I'll warning would you find dangerous. on a pair of binoculars? Look, they're right there. You see the binoculars? There they are. Pocket binoculars. Uh, instructions right there. A, fold open. B, focus. C, enjoy the view. That's unbelievable. I, okay, I'm, I'm in downtown New, Newark. I've, I've done A. I, I've done B. And for some reason, C doesn't seem to be working. Now, you see... Now, strictly speaking, not a warning. This was yes. instruction. An instruction. Right. So we have a little of each. We have a... Some warnings, some instruction. Well, I'd like to see Dave whisper more to the men. <laughs> Can't, could, how come he don't whisper? <laughs> if, if Dave has men's on as guests, All right. How come he can't whisper to him? <clears throat> uh, and again, Dick, I mean no offense. You understand? Me? Expanded Im impression. Okay, here, here we have a little something. This is a uh, heat wave curling iron. And uh, this is something you use in your hair, I guess. Well, you, yeah, okay, sorry. I, I suppose. Uh, and then the warning on this one, it, <laughs> the warning on this one, it says, never use while sleeping. <laughs> of course, of course you would never use this in bed. That's when you're supposed to be relaxing with a cigarette. That's what you're... <laughs> Telephone, Paul. Telephone right here. And uh, instructions on how to use the telephone. Look, it's a regular, uh, oh, it's a Radio Shack phone. And then they have the instructions right there. Okay, let's run through these. Uh, making calls. One, lift the handset. Okay. Two, dial the telephone number. Three, speak to the other party. Four, hang up when you're finished. <laughs> but you know, if you're in a real hurry, you can skip three. Yeah, that three is the one that always slows me down. Now here again, we have a, it's a dust buster. It's a cordless dust buster. Safety rules. We got safety rules right here. Can you see these? When vacuuming, do not place nozzle on outlet of dust buster near eyes or ears when dust busting. <laughs> hey, Bob, what's, what's the deal with that eye patch? I, I said, what's, what's the deal with your eye patch, Bob? Huh? Last one? Oh, all right. Well, let's make it a really good one then, shall we? Ooh. All right. Let's try this one right here. Uh, this is something that's from, oh, again, from another phone. Panasonic cordless telephones. Uh, excessive, can you see that? Excessive bending or chewing of the rubber antenna. <laughs> bending or chewing of the rubber antenna will result in permanent damage. Oh, screw it. This is delicious. Okay. We got a great program, kids. We're going to do a commercial, and Tony Danza will appear when we come back. Thanks for being here tonight. <laughs> for being with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. On the program, Tony Danza, Waylon Jennings, and uh, Tama Janowitz. I'm telling you, if there's a better show on television anywhere than tonight's, uh, buy, buy yeah. it. Buy it. <laughs> Go try and buy that show. That's right. What was that song you were playing coming out of the... That's uh, uh, Level 42. 
Yeah. Something about your love is, affair. Is it a new song, old it's song? It's a sort of a contemporary Relatively new? thing. Relatively Last yeah. six, eight months? A couple of years yeah, old. Yeah, very nice. Three years old. I enjoyed it. Thanks, though. Three years old, is it? I would really? say, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's do the top ten list tonight and then bring out our uh, friend Tony Danza. This comes to us from the home office in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Uh, the category of the list tonight, top ten ways to annoy a flight attendant. <laughs> these would be the ten most annoying things you can do to a flight attendant. Now, let me just say here, I don't, I don't recommend you do these things. No. Because these people work very, very hard. And I would say that in all my years of flying commercial airlines, I've had nothing but really good quality wonderful experiences with the men and women who are flight attendants on commercial airlines in this country. Here are ten ways now that you could annoy them, but, but don't. Don't do this. No, because no. they're working very, very yes. hard. Because a lot of them, they fly around the world once, they, they let them off, they go to the airport coffee shop, they can have some soup, they get back on the plane, right fly around the world around. again. Yeah. And that'd be like they do that every day for a week and then they get a weekend. That's hard. So please, don't... Don't do any of these. Don't annoy them. No. But here now would be... The, they polled a group of flight attendants. Boy, I'd like to have seen that. Oh, well. <laughs> stop, stop. Uh, top ten ways now to annoy uh, a flight attendant. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Uh, number ten. <clears throat> Make loud propeller noises with your mouth for a duration of flight. Number nine. Ask for a blanket. Run up and down aisle pretending to be ghost. I've done that. Uh, <clears throat> Number eight, giggle uncontrollably each time she says duty-free. Number seven, maintain emergency landing position for entire flight. I've done that. <laughs> I've done that, too. I've, I've done that at the airport. You see? I've done that in the lounge. I know. I heard you did. Uh, number six, uh, date her for 12 years, put her in all your movies, then start dating her daughter. The jumbo jet which just went over now, Paul. Uh, number five, uh, push call button, ask for pancakes, repeat. Uh, number four, hypnotize seatmate into not returning his tray table to original and upright lock position. Number three, ask whether Salisbury steak can be used as a flotation device. Number two, number two, fill air sickness bag with coleslaw, toss it movie screen. You don't, you don't, I'm telling you, you don't, you don't want to be doing this stuff. And the number one way to annoy a flight attendant Keep calling her mommy. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm very excited to have our uh, first guest with us on the program. He hasn't been here in a while, and he's uh, always very entertaining when he is. He uh, has been on such television successes as, of course, uh, Taxi, and uh, also... Are you testing equipment now? I was well reacting positively to tax. All right. And uh, also uh, the star of Who's the Boss on September 2nd. He will host a special of his own entitled The Getting Over on uh, ABC. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Tony Danza. with Hall of Famer. Yeah! The Beach Boys. Dance, dance, dance. That is correct. Always puts me in the mind of being 16 years old, drinking warm beer. Well. Great song. Anything we can do for you. Uh, let's see. Coming up in this half hour, Waylon Jennings. You think this is great music? Wait till Mr. Jennings gets here. And uh, also, uh, one of the uh, popular authors of the day, Tama Janowitz, will ah. be out uh, on the program. Tomorrow, you know, you know what I saw last night? I went to a film, I saw that big sound. Have you folks seen that thing? This is a powerful motion picture. Try to go see this if you can. It's unbelievable. What a, what a sleeper. What a, I think this is going to be the surprise hit of the summer. And Paul Schaefer, you didn't tell me this, has a small part in Digstown. It in was... addition to being one of the most, it's like the feel-good hit of the summer. And then, and then you see your friend in it, it makes you feel it even better. The role, huh? It was really nothing, a it's, small... I'm, uh, no, 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 no. Nothing. Please, you're being too modest. Hal, do you have a clip of Paul Schaefer in that? Yeah. What? Watch this, ladies and gentlemen, and then go see the movie Digstown. You can hit me all you want, but I was born in Digstown. I'm going to die in Digstown. Nobody, nobody can make me leave. 
Dickstown. That, that wasn't the scene I was thinking of. But oh. <laughs> uh, Helen Schaefer will be here tomorrow. Bill Mayer, Mar, Bill Mar, Bill Mayer, what Mar? Well, suddenly I can't pronounce the guy's name. I've known him for 10 years. Bill, Bill Mar. Mar, yeah. yeah. Uh, and musician Toots Thielmans. His name I have no trouble pronouncing. Right. <laughs> well, we have to do a commercial. We'll be right back here. 50 back to zero. Thank you, boys. Our next guest is a country music legend. This is certainly true. Not many people you can actually accurately say that about. This is the case tonight. An honest to God country music legend. This man is uh, responsible for over uh, 60 albums in his career. Uh, his latest is right here. It's called Too Dumb for New York City, Too Ugly for L.A. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program Waylon Jennings. Waylon! This is some job I have, isn't it? I look over to you and I do this. Hey, hey! <laughs> well, make, and I make a lot of money. I make an awful lot of money for yeah. that. Our next guest is the author of this book right here. It's called The Male Crossdresser Support Group. Folks, please do us a big favor. Welcome back to the program, Tama Janowitz. Tama? <laughs> Wow! You look like you're living behind the A and P. <laughs> Male crossdresser and support group. Because everybody should wear different things to see what it's like to be somebody else. And this is the kind of evidence you needed to get yourself or your husband a green card? That you're goofy enough to dress up pets and then they say, okay, you're in, come on. Next. Uh, what, what is Tama? What is that? That's a very unusual first name. Is it short for something? Is it an abbreviation? Is it a nickname? Tama. What um, is that? From a book of babies' names. No, it's not. What no, is no, it really? It is, it your, is. your mom and dad picked up Tama? Well, my last name is Janowitz, and well, there I know wasn't that. That too many names that went. Tama, Tama Janowitz. Janowitz. Yeah. Do you have a middle name? No. Yes, you do. What no, is it? No, no, I don't. Yes, you do. You're... I don't. It was Tama Janowitz, no, but you, you said Tama Jamowitz. Well, I said Jamowitz? Yes. Yeah. But that's all right, because Larry King said that I have a new album coming out. <laughs> how, many, how many wigs did you wear for Larry? <laughs> well, we have to do a commercial. We'll be right back here. Did I say gentlemen? Oh, my goodness. Uh, we have to go, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody.